Hi, hello everybody. This is my logarithmic equation section. And I decided to do this one on uh, something associated with programming code called Big O Notation. Which, what Big no O Notation actually does is it evaluates the efficiency of a computer algorithm. Essentially the speed that it performs at. And you have three main categories in this big O notation, which you have O to the N, which is basically a linear model, which the speed of the equation is affected linearly by the size of the set of instructions that are in it. The main ones we're going to focus on are O to the N squared and O log N, because this is a logarithmic section. Now with O to the N squared, with this set of instructions, I'm going to give you a couple examples of each one. That way you kind of get some context on exactly what we're dealing with. With O to the N squared, you have your first set of instructions, which is a loop. In that loop, the instructions are to count to 20. Now, inside that loop, there's another loop, which also counts to 20. So every time this loop counts, if it goes to 1, it goes to the next set of instructions which this one has to count all the way to 20 before the first one can go to 2. So this goes to 1, this counts all the way to 20, this goes to 2, counts all the way to 20, goes to 3, counts all the way to 20, and that's where the n squared comes from. So essentially you're getting 20 squared because of the fact that for each iteration of the first loop it has to go through all iterations of the next loop. Now for O log N, which is, what this will demonstrate is how much more efficient this type of code can be. Uh, for this particular example, uh, say you were telling a computer to look for a particular book. Uh, you have a set of books all listed by the last names of the authors, A through Z. With an O log N type of set of instructions, what this would do is this would actually divide your set in half with each iteration. So with the first one where you have A to Z, M is your midpoint. Uh, say we're looking for the book, a book written by Descartes. So we would go to the midpoint M and it would compare whether the first letter D for Descartes is greater than or less than that letter M, which we know D is less than that. So it goes to the next iteration where it takes all the letters, you don't even have to search anything past M because we know that D is less than M. So we have A through L, which our midpoint is F, and it compares D being greater than or less than F, which we know again is less than F. And so again, it, it, it takes all the letters before F because the ones after that don't matter anymore. So then we have A through E which our midpoint there is C and when it compares greater than or less than there we know that C is less than D so at this point what we have is we have all the letters in front so it goes down and, and basically what we have here is we only have two letters left we have D and E which we do a simple comparison and when we originally started out with 26 possibilities it only took us four iterations to actually find the book that we were looking for. And you might say, that's pretty silly, Jeremy. You can always go to the letter D from A, and you're, you're looking at the same four hops. But what happens if you're dealing with maybe... 10 million sets of names and numbers. It becomes a little more complicated then where you can't guarantee you're only going to get four hops going in a linear fashion. And so what happens when we're dealing with very large data sets like this, this is exactly what we're going to find out with our equation here, uh, which is right over here. Our function deals with 
O N set of instructions. This is the number of instructions that we're dealing with, whether it be O to the N, O to the N squared, or O log N, divided by the amount of instructions per second that the computer you're dealing with is capable of. And so we're going to run basically a little, uh, little scenario here where if we had, we're going to deal with this same number of instructions that we have here. We're going to deal with 10 million, a 10 million data set. And so with our, we're going to have on squared and this will be we'll, we'll call this computer A and we'll say computer A is actually a really fast computer it can handle 10 to the 10 instructions per second And then we'll have computer B, which this one's running O to the N squared on computer A. For computer B, we'll actually be running a much more efficient code, which will be N to the log N. Now this one is running on a much slower computer, however, so this one is only capable of 10 to the 7 instructions per second. And so what I would like you to do is actually perform the math on these two. O to the n squared with the faster computer of 10 to the 10 instructions per second and O n to the log n set of instructions on a slower computer at 10 to the 7 instructions per second and where applicable you can divide it into minutes or hours or however long it may take just to, or you can leave it in seconds that's totally your prerogative but uh, this is a really good example of what more efficient code will do when you're dealing with extremely large data sets and once you find that one actually for to go one step further to even highlight the effect of what log n computer programming does I'd also like you to find where n equals 10 to the 8th where you're dealing with 100 million sets of instructions and this will really show the difference between what an inefficient code even on really good hardware will do compared to really efficient code on on any type of hardware really okay and so once you find that uh, display your findings and let us know what you think. Okay, thank you.